So the way we found the Wonder House, we had been hanging out, it was January 2015, and I was doing some Googling and I found the Polk County History Center and it's like, oh, that's cool, we love museums, let's go visit. And then I ended up finding the Wonder House on Google. I said, let's go check out this house, it's right down the street in town, let's see what it looks like. I remember driving up and Drew just like ran up to the front door to read that paper for sale. January 2015, I first saw the Wonder House and I immediately fell in love. It reminded me of Maymont Park. I absolutely love the house. I've always had like just a great interest in history, I always loved it, always read you know different history books, that's what I was into all my whole life growing up. When I was back in Virginia, which is where I am originally from, there was this really, really cool estate known as Maymont Park, and I absolutely fell in love with it, and I would always make my parents take me when I could finally drive, I would go myself, but I absolutely loved it. It had these gardens, this really unique, interesting, and different house, and so when I came down to Florida, that was always kind of in my mind. We didn't really have anything like that in Florida, it seemed, at least I thought. You know, we'd just been hanging out very infrequently at that time, and Drew became pretty much obsessed with acquiring this house, and Drew acquired it at auction in October of 2015. I guess by October of 2015, I had purchased the house, and by January of 2016, I had moved in. And that's where it all began. And then I remember as soon as, you know, we got the keys in hand, we came in here in November like first and started cleaning out the moat in the front because it was completely overgrown and trying to measure all the rooms and getting frustrated. When I first came into the actual house, it was a mess, a lot, a lot of water damage everywhere, and I could tell there was just a tremendous amount of work to fix up a house like this, so I immediately wanted some sort of plan I could have to, you know, check boxes basically, actually show some progress. When you're working on a project of this scale, you want little victories to say you completed. So I kind of sketched out how long I actually wanted to spend on the house. Um, I came up with 10 years, at least for kind of phase one, to really bring it back to where it was. Um, and I'm about, what, I'm coming up on three years. Pretty much from October to then I was commuting on weekends, just painting, plastering, busting our butts, trying to get it up and going. I'm hoping to have it really back to where it was. I want to do a restoration, not really an alteration, but really bring it back to how it would have been. Um, originally the house would not have been furnished under Conrad Shook, who was the original builder, designer and everything. So I'm trying to kind of go with his vision with my actual furniture. But that's kind of where I've been going forward. Here's the thing that people don't realize. The house was completely empty when we got it. So everything you see in the house is everything that we've acquired. So completely empty shell, there was no hot water heater, there was no refrigerator, there was no furniture, there were no light fixtures, there was nothing. Even the doorknobs were taken off the doors literally months before. So we've just built it back up from like ground zero. And even back in the day when you did tours, Shook had, you know, his taxidermy birds, he had the prism with, you know, the mirrors and the lights upstairs, but it was just very few and far between. There weren't any chairs. They had a range, but there wasn't, there was no couches, no tables, nothing. So fun fact, people, there was nothing here. So when you want to put something together as far as furniture goes and to do more interior design, you kind of have the whole world open to you. But the house was built in the 20s, started being built in the 20s, so. But we like things for more from like 1880, 1890 from that realm. But I think it kind of goes with the aesthetic of the house and try to make it our own.
we try to do everything as Conrad Shook would have wanted. So he loved the eclectic little pieces and the taxidermies and the, you know, snakes and jars. So how we can do him justice and keep the house to what he would have wanted it to be since it was never truly finished. And it's good because our interests line up pretty well with what he likes. So just making it kind of happen again. The original builder, because I mean, he did have that really eerie perspective. I know at one time he had a coffin in the front parlor, which everyone, according to all the interviews, up here were like, that's nothing unusual, you know, I expected that out of Conrad, you know. You also expect a... that out of me. You know, that's why Mr. Bones hangs out in random rooms sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, I did have a part of a casket that was salvaged from a, um, a funeral home that was going out of business. My friend found it out of a dumpster for me and that lived in the house for a while, kind of got thrown in the shed. Yeah, mine. You know, we have a lot of weird, odd things, but people even donate things. Very we strange a, things, yeah. Yeah. I usually banish or exile most of Kristen's really odd things out to the shed. Yeah, it's okay. Go wherever you want, but we try to keep it structured kind of to the Conrad Shook vision. Yeah, it's like anything that has, you know, a history to it or has a certain aesthetic or a feel. Mostly darker things, carved and... Glorious. Yes, and dark colors. I like dark wall colors. My mother's not. Yeah. At all. <laughs> we have lamps. It's fine. I don't want white walls. That's not, that's not that the Wonder House. That does not do house. justice to the Wonder House. Yeah, no. you need something weird and different and inspiring. I think, you know, maroon is a very inspiring wall color. And blue. I like blue. Okay, um, this here is kind of like my private study slash library. Um, it's my favorite room in the house. We both got, kind of got to pick rooms, which we were gonna make <laughs> our own. Um, we actually kind of got the main, I guess, how should I say it, head of design for, I got to make my own choices for this room. Um, it's a lot of the furniture I like. Originally this would have been the dining room for the house. This would not have originally been the library. It was, when I first moved in, I had my parents coming to visit pretty relatively quickly and it this was room was in December. just such bad shape. We ended up using what would have been the living room for the dining room and it just kind of stuck. So this kind of stayed as the library um, slash study. It's um, pretty much my favorite furniture, all my favorite items I kind of put in here, my weird oddities that I like. You know, I got some arms and armor and that kind of stuff. I'm a bit of a hoplolophile, so I love collecting old arms and armor. That's something I've always been into. It kind of goes along with hand in hand with the history. But yeah, this one, probably one of the rooms in the worst condition. It's, it's definitely not finished now. We still need a lot of trim work and everything else. I still need just looking around. I what see a lot of things I need to do, yeah. But I like the way it's turning out, so. This is the eastern sunroom of the Wonder House. This would have been the part of the open porch that was going across the front of the house and it was called the floral porch according to the only blueprint that we do have. All the floors are hand laid mosaics so um, it's all a flat surface so what we think that they did was wrap all the individual tiles and in newspapers and then lay them down and then do their little concrete and everything else um, in certain layers to get it all just into a smooth surface. So again, think about how many man hours it would take to crush up all the tiles into the shapes and you know lay them all down and get it completely smooth to the touch, which is very, very impressive. So those are probably the most notable features of both the sunrooms that we have. This room would have been open. So the windows were put in by Lucy Ducharme. She acquired the house in 1963 and I know she started work, I think, 1964. So this would have all been open. And uh, we're going to keep it enclosed because it is valuable square footage to the house and 
it's just nice like family rooms. If you have people coming to visit, you have places to seat them because a lot of the rooms are kind of small. So it's just like good living area. And usually for Christmas, we set up two big trees in the center of both sunrooms, so it's nice. But then over on this side, we have this giant cabinet. This is in one, two, three, four massive pieces. Every part of it weighs several hundred pounds. And so it was just me and Drew lugging it up the stairs, putting it together. And let me tell you, my little arms were shaking <laughs> to put this guy up. But this is another piece we got at a local auction in outside of Ocala. And it currently houses China. So this cabinet I actually use for silver plated goblets because you can't have a dinner party without them. But primarily it's a china cabinet as of right now. I'm not sure what the end usage will be, but I like vintage china and antique china, so that's where everything lives. And then most of the furniture in this room is a little bit, some of it's very gothic, some of it's more classic like 1920s with the Chesterfield and everything else. So I'm not sure where direction we want to go here yet, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. But actually on this wall is one of the spigots that would uh, you would turn and the water would come out of the walls to water all your plants. Since this was an open porch, these were all planters covered in plants. And then you'd have like little rocking chairs in here. And so actually in one of the old photos you can see a woman demonstrating the water coming from the walls. So water would collect in reservoirs on the top floor, it would flow through the walls, and it would collect so you could water all your plants, which was a pretty cool feature of the house. I didn't move in full time until it was July of 2017, because I, I, I was working in corporate America at the time and then I took a teaching job down here in Polk County in order to move here full time. One thing I liked about the area, um, I actually came from the area I was from in Virginia, it was very agricultural I guess. Um, up there obviously a little different, soybeans and corn, down here it's more cattle, but I really did not want to be anywhere near a big city and I think that's really what I loved about Polk. County, you know, it does. It has some, you know, you got Lakeland, you can still go up and visit. I mean, Tampa and Orlando are close, but at the same time, I get that smaller town feel that really it's not the hustle bustle of a city. Well, I was down in Lee County prior to coming here full time. And Lee County is pretty well built up now. I remember moving there way back in the day and it was not as massive as it has been. Um, the population has just boomed. But coming to Polk County, it was just nice. You feel like you're kind of in the country in a way. Driving up, you know, 17, you're going through all the small towns and then you end up in Bartow, which is like the cutest, you know, homiest small town ever. I mean, they still have like the Halloween parade that's been running since the 40s. I think that's amazing. Polk County is very welcoming, especially Bartow in general. Everyone's just really friendly and welcoming and they want to like adopt you into their little family community and it's just kind of magical here. I guess owner would have been the actual builder, which would have been Conrad Shook. Um, he had a large family, nine children, I believe. Yeah. Um, five kids, which are five boys. boys who actually helped him work on the actual house. Um, he never actually lived in the house. A lot of people do not know that detail. Um, pretty interesting, you know, as long as he worked on it for what, at least, at least 15 years of working on it and then owning it for, I would say around 30. He began his construction in 1926. And then from him, the next person to actually 
owned the house, I guess, was Lucy Du Charm. Um, she actually bought it from, he sold it to a church, which actually subdivided up the lot. It did have a good deal of acreage, we believe around 10 acres. And that's where you see a lot of the houses around the Wonder House. Um, they subdivided it up and the largest lot with the actual house was about two and a half acres. That went to Lucy Ducharme. And she was the first person to actually finish the house and live in the house. Um, from there, uh, Charles Hayden owned it after Lucy Ducharme did. Um, and there was actually a period of where it was essentially abandoned between both Lucy Ducharme and Charles Hayden. And then from Charles Hayden is when I actually took ownership of it. Travel Guide of Florida. In 1937, Wonder House was actually on the back cover of the whole brochure. So anybody visiting Florida in the 30s would have, you know, gotten this book, for example, at the little AAA tourist destination. And then usually these books um, would list all the local attractions, places to stay. And then Wonder House was one of their featured places. Another brochure inside, somebody actually went and sketched how she set up all the little rooms. And it had um, the patrons, people who helped out. But it's cool to see because, you know, it gives some extra features of the house. We have a lot of old articles. Here's a Lucy one. Um, we actually got some blueprints. We're not quite sure what they are. They must have been something that Shook used for, whoops, um, building, yeah, excavating or drilling or so if anybody knows anything yeah. about that. We collect all the antique map. postcards. Was really a large map, collection of them. Was too. Yes you have yeah. Wonder House so, and then you have the only one we don't have is the one postcard unfortunately. We're just still searching for that one. And then some of the old photographs. And um, then we so have the like scrapbooks of just the articles, letters, maps. Again here's a road map. oil company it used to be have actual you can actually see the Wonder House if you got an old standard oil map from their old gas stations. It's oil map. And the bar was really on the map back then. The Wonder House was too. Yes, you have Wonder House, and then you have obviously Bach Tower as well. And then some of the old photographs, um, so from like the original family. The Wonder House is four floors above ground, so you have a ground floor, then the main floor, which is what we're on, and then two floors above, and then there's two floors below us. So we have one of the few Florida basements carved entirely out of rock, so when you open the trap door, and seeing that trap door for the first time was kind of horrifying. So I remember when Drew was like, oh yeah, somebody was telling me that there's like rooms underground. I read it in an article, and he's like, I think I saw the trap door, and I was like, no. So we <laughs> we come in, you know, unlock the door, come and do our normal like, you know, work on the house. We find the trap door in what we call the basement, but it's the ground floor. Yeah, they open the door. Oh, it's horrifying. I can't see anything. Where's the flashlight? Oh, Flashlight, 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 flashlight. And then you open up and it's just pitch darkness and this like hand carved like staircase out of stone and you're like, oh, what is this? So I'm just filming the whole thing and freaking out at the same time. It's like, this is real? Is this real? Like, this is Silence of the Lambs. Like, what is this? So you, you know, you went down in it with like, you're like, in the basket. <laughs> I'm gonna do an Airbnb for Silence of the Lambs. I'm gonna drop you in the pit and give you a little basket. I'm gonna charge like 200 bucks. But anyway, so Drew goes down there with his little light and then when you go down the stairs, to the left is a little room and it goes back a little bit ways and you can actually find some of the tile and the glass that they used in the mosaics for the house, which is really yeah. cool. And they used to be the fuel storage room, but then down to the right is a 22 foot drop into a giant pit that's partially filled with water sometimes because water seeps through and then you can see the centrifugal pump. Put the light on the water so I can zoom in. Bodies. I don't see any. Oh, they're in there, Kristen. Oh, there's something down there. Do you see it? What? I don't know. It's a Coke bottle. Uh, something else. So, right now we're trying to clean it out and kind of seal it off so we can have it as a room. But think of it, that's where the Wonder House started. 
you know, yeah. that's like ground that's what floor. I, the, Ground zero for it. Yeah. yeah, that's what I really like about it. You can actually see the piles of glass and tile where you guys are actually setting it into the cement and all the walls and the moat and everything else. And it's really, really, you can actually see the different piles because what um, Conrad would do with his kids, they really wanted all the different colored glass and particularly at that time, blue glass was rare. So they would buy up the entire like recycled glass trucks and have them just dump all the bottles there. And they would pick out the colors they want, smash them up in these big piles so they could get the right colors, and then they would just basically sell it right back. But they wanted to get those specific, very specific colors. And you can actually see the individual piles. You can see piles of shells they would use for the moat, mm -hmm. the tile piles, the inside. It's just really cool down there. You can actually see kind of what was going on through their mind, and as they actually were building the house, it's still preserved, which I think is really cool. Everything was locally sourced for the house. He got everything from the land itself or just from nearby in Polk County. So the railroad ties that reinforce the concrete go through the yeah. concrete walls and you can see like it's sticking out on one of the sides yeah. of the house, which yeah. is cool. It's kind of cool. The house is actually reinforced with railroad, railroad <laughs> track just basically, yep, going right through it. And then they got all the glass locally. They got tiles from seven different countries around the yeah. world. It's the one thing he did not do local just because the, the tiles you'll see on the fireplace. And then what else was there? All the, what? So, I mean, he got the rocks, the limestone, everything yeah. excavated from the moat out front is actually, he just, it was basically quarry. Excavated. Yeah, he was originally a quarry guy, so he was undaunted when he ended up finding out that he was right on bedrock, which is kind of weird for Florida. But he got right to it and just built a moat. He's like, oh, I'll get my building supplies right here. So it's kind of cool story. Out in the middle of nowhere in the 20s. This is the dining room. This is the first room that we finished in the Wonder House. It was the first room to get a new wall color. We painted the ceiling. This is the floor that was affected by termites. Um, the dining room table was one of the first pieces acquired. Um, it was from a local antique shop and then the chairs we actually got at auction online. But I think they kind of meshed together well. The other things we have in this room is this beautiful china cabinet. I love Wedgwood china so it is full of China, of course. And then this is one of the rooms that is kind of as much of a finished room in the Wonder House as you can get besides maybe mm, the upstairs bathroom. Maybe. We have all our old paintings on the walls. Again, everything in here is antique except for one thing, which are the curtains because they are from Ikea. So hopefully one day we will find the correct antique curtains to grace our windows. But until then, I think these look just fine. And they match the sunflowers. <laughs> and then right now it's almost Halloween, so I decided to decorate for a Halloween table setting. This is the parlor. Um, it's the main entrance room to the actual Wonder House, so we kind of wanted to really show off the themes that we're going for. Um, the first thing we acquired was this chandelier for this room. I wanted something that would really, really bring the room and the house together. There's a big antique shop. I had my eye on the chandelier. I absolutely loved it. It's exactly what I was looking for for, I want to say about a year or two. Um, way out of my price range. I kept saving up for it. Um, I finally made like a real, real lowball offer. And the guy actually accepted it. So I got the chandelier. I was so excited. And I think a couple months later, right after I bought it, the entire antique door burned down. It's actually not electrified, so I have to get fancy with oil if I want to actually have it lit, which I do plan on doing one day. Right above that, you'll see the actual, these unique ceiling panels, and this is another one of Conrad Shuck's inventions. He had, I should say Shuk, I've been corrected by the family, it's Shuk, not Shuck, as I've been saying, but if you look up here, you'll see the ceiling, and these are actually removable ceiling panels. If he would have used these originally, he could actually take them down so he wouldn't have to redecorate the entire room, and he would have different paintings in each one. Um, originally it would have been just basic Florida scenes, 
but he could actually change them out for Christmas, for Halloween. You could have different, you know, hand done paintings in your wall to decorate the house, which is pretty cool. One of the original things on the original tour Conrad Shook would have done was the actual taxiderm birds. So anytime we're at a flea market, uh, Reningers, and we do Mount Dora a lot. If we see taxidermy, we try to pick it up. So uh, we've also had a lot just donated to us, a lot, especially some of the old stuff, which is really, really cool. Um, this here is the aforementioned fireplace. It's kind of the central feature of the parlor. Um, he had tiles imported from seven different countries, is what we've read. Conrad Shook during World War II was actually accused of being a German spy and actually spent three days in jail because of that. And the reason is there's a floor above this with the connects pretty much to the same fireplace. And the floor above, he actually used a periscope and a mirror system that would actually reflect light down through the chimney. And with that, he actually had an old crank he could turn and he could actually have the light filtered through a prism and he could actually change the color of the walls by turning that. And so he could split all the different colors out and just have different colored walls based on a light reflection. Regardless, a bunch of the inhabitants of Bartow believed that this was a spy contraption. So poor old Conrad got um, thrown in jail over it and there was actually a big investigation and the FBI actually did issue a clearance letter for him that he was not a spy, that you know, he was just a different dude. Um, as a result of that though, Conrad did not want to deal with it anymore, so rather than keep the feature, he just completely um, cemented in the actual chimney and the fireplace. So it is not functional, unfortunately. Over here we have um, some of my personal collections. Before I went into law, I was very heavily considering going into entomology. My particular area was Coleoptera, which is just beetles. Um, and I thought it, I was blessed because it really went well with Conrad Shuck's natural theme he had in the house with the taxidermed animals and that kind of stuff. So here you can kind of see some of my different beetles I have on display. You'll actually see them throughout the entire house. Here is a, actually just a beaver skull. So it would have been a pretty big beaver. I used to be very, very active in actually going out and collecting them myself as well as buying them. I would do eBay, online, a bunch of different stuff like that. This is Big E. We actually found a pawn shop which was going out of business and the guy wanted everything out that week and he was like, I will make you a great deal on an elk. And I was like, well, all I have right now is my little Kia. I don't, I don't think he'd fit in that. And he's like, well, dude, I have to get it out right now. So if you want this, you gotta buy it now. And I was like, okay, sure. So I ended up picking up this enormous elk mount so there I was, all I had was a Kia, this enormous elk mount I had to take out right then. We attempted to uh, numerous configurations, try to put his head out the sunroof. Again, everything was just way too large, the shoulder mount too big. So we ended up actually sticking him in the trunk with the trunk open. We could really only get the shoulders in there and the entire head was sticking out the back of the car. So it looked like there was an entire elk just in the car with his head poking out the back. You can imagine some of the reactions we got from other drivers. But lo and behold, as I said, both of our phones died. We had no navigation, had not a clue where we were. We knew we were roughly two or three hours away from the Wonder House. We had just moved here, so didn't know the area well at all. And torrential downpour, one of those famous Florida torrential downpours come. I'm completely lost, have no clue where we're going, but alas, the story ends well. We somehow found our way back. Big E, the Christmas elk, made it to the house. This is the western sunroom. Again, this would have been part of the open floral porch from back in the day, but Lucy was the one that enclosed it. This is the sunroom that connects to the dining room and then back to the parlor. So again, you have the beautiful mosaic floors here. And then in this room currently, we have a lot of Victorian furniture. So we have a lot of couches. It's a good seating area, usually for like Christmas. We'll put the little tray in the middle and everyone gets to sit around and it's, it's just a nice gathering room. We have our curiosity cabinet back here and this has things that have been gifted to us that we found at auctions. Um, the organs that were donated to us very kindly are in here. We have little eyeballs, we have snakes, we have peacocks, we have hedgehogs. Drew is a huge insect collector, so we have a lot of insects as well. And then back here we have a cabinet. This came out of a, a cattle rancher's house down in Fort Meade, actually, and it was termite infested. So that was a fun afternoon activity covering everything in sheets and boric acid and just waiting for everything to just burn. So we drug this inside. It's kind of a hunting style cabinet but we use it for drinks and glassware and we have this really terrifying marble bust of a small child. Heavy and creepy at night like you don't want to see this watching back at you at night. I don't, I don't like it. I just don't like it. Thank <laughs> you.